Democrats and Republicans may be moving closer to compromise on extending the current payroll tax break. Our Chief Washington correspondent Peter Cook has the latest on this issue. Peter. A lot of politics, but some progress as well, Betty. Leaders in both parties now agree the current payroll tax cut should be extended another year at a minimum, but they still disagree over exactly how to pay for it. The price tag to keep it in place for 2012, about $120 billion. Senate Republicans late Wednesday proposed to cover that cost by extending the current freeze on federal worker pay for another three years, also by shrinking the federal workforce by 10 percent, and by means testing government benefits like Medicare for wealthier Americans. Americans. They also take a swipe at Warren Buffett to some extent by including language making it easier for Americans to voluntarily pay more in taxes if they want to. Now, Democrats say the Republican proposal cannot pass as it stands, but Republicans insist the president's version of this plan also a non-starter. He and congressional Democrats want to extend the payroll tax break and expand it. Total price tag there, $265 billion. They would pay for it with a 3.25 percent surtax on couples earning more than a million a year. Republicans Republicans say that won't fly with them. Betty, we could have the first procedural votes on the competing plans later on today. Both will likely fail. That's when the real negotiating should really kick in. Okay, well, for more on this issue, Peter, we're joined right now by, by a Republican from Oklahoma and the former Gang of Six member, uh, Senator Tom Coburn. Senator, thank you very much for joining me. And do you think... Good to be with you. Do you think that extending these payroll tax cuts is, in fact, going to get bipartisan support and it's going to pass? Probably, but it's very dangerous uh, for the, the long-term uh, sustainability of Social Security because what you're doing is undermining the way we pay for it. And, you know, after two years of having a, a significant 2% actual bonus on your pay by not paying uh, a Social Security tax, uh, people are going to get used to that. Mm -hmm. And we're already hearing it in the rhetoric. What? Uh, with people saying they want to raise taxes on the average working person. Uh, there's no question we need to reform the tax code, but by undermining Social Security and its long-term capability, probably isn't the best way to do it. We certainly can't do what the president wants to do. That's $290 billion, not 266 as Peter said, $290 billion uh, uh, a year. Uh, and and so that will total, that'll totally gut Social Security. So, uh, as a uh, system where you pay in and get out. So, Senator, then you're aligned with your fellow Republicans then about what Peter had outlined, uh, you know, paying for this through freezing worker salaries? Well, I, uh, look, th there's, Betty, there's $350 billion worth of duplication, waste, and fraud in the federal government every year. If we want to do this so we help continue to have some stimulus and increase the consumer power in the economy, what we ought to do is to, we ought to go after the waste, fraud, and duplication. And what we have is a bunch of lazy members of Congress that refuse to do that. Mm. Uh, and and that's, those aren't estimates. Those are, we can document that. We can show it. Right. We, uh, we, we tried to put an amendment on the floor yesterday uh, to save a billion dollars in the Pentagon uh, because the Pentagon spends $51,000 a year educating kids on base. Right. You know, four and a half times what everybody else spends. Right, Senator, and I know that you've, uh, that you've, also, that you've put out a report, you know, with some, you know, very specific numbers on some of the tax breaks that the wealthy get and how we can reduce the deficit by, by getting rid of those. But let me just move very quickly on uh, to the gang of six and, and, and to the budget deficit because we had the super committee failure. Uh, what is, is there any, is there any currency gain from trying to resurrect, let's say, the gang of six again to tackle the budget deficit? Well, something's got to happen. Uh, the, 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 first of all, everybody recognizes if we're going to get out of trouble, in our country and put us back healthy, then over the next 10 years, we need to get somewhere between eight and nine trillion dollars out of the government and back into the hands of individuals. Uh, and if we don't do that, then the, the, what is happening to Greece, what's happening in Portugal, what's gonna happen in Italy is gonna happen to us. The question is, is will politicians move to do what's best for the country, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's through the Gang of Six or some other way, and do that in a timely basis so that the, the pain associated with fixing our country is the least it needs to be. Delaying will make the pain much worse. Okay, Senator, thank you very much. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. Great to see Good you to again. You, Betty. Senator Bye -bye. Coburn uh, from the Hill. We'll be back in two minutes on In the Loop. The new 